Hello there, welcome to the video. Felt like making a video, you know, haven't in a while. I don't know, just not feeling it. Uh, and, you know, why do something when you don't feel like it? Um, but now I feel like it, so I'm, I'm making a video. Uh, I hope to make more videos uh, in the coming. Well, we have the European Individual Championship coming up in Reykjavik. Maybe, maybe I can record something, you know, day in the life of an organizer. Or some inside stuff or something. But after that tournament, uh, I'm gonna study chess a lot because I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play in the European Club Cup. That's the last tournament I played abroad in 2019. So yeah, after the European Championship, I'm gonna analyze the games from from two years ago. Already started with one of them. But yeah, let's get get, get on with it. Uh, <laughs> the purpose of this video. Uh, this is kind of one of those chess, curio uh, chess curiosity videos. I have several of those, which I have put uh, in a playlist, which you can check out. I will link you to it. But the reason, yeah, uh, we're playing this video uh, is a game that I played online. And I didn't realize until kind of after the game that I was well on my way to, you know, Perhaps immortality. Um, I'm not going to say that, but you know. uh, so I played this game. I had the white pieces. Uh, I was playing around a little bit e4. I don't usually play this line. I played from time to time. It's uh, it's a tricky line, especially if white goes. Uh, if black goes knight c6, we play b4. Takes takes, and this is very dangerous for black. D4. My opponent went d6. The gambit here with uh, after d5 is very dangerous. C3. And maybe one day we'll, we'll make a video on this, but this is very dangerous for black. He has to be very careful. Trust me on that. But okay, d6 was played in the game. So I, I chased the knight, play c3, and d5. So this is kind of becoming uh, an alikine on the other side of the board. And just like in the alikine, we play f4, you know, c4 in alikine, f4 here. And I kind of made this like a chase variation, h4. Uh, I've seen. Uh, Gotham, you know, play a4 against the knight on b6 and, and the other kind, so I thought I'll, I'll play h4. You play e5 and I'll play f5, hitting the knight. Now I thought knight takes, uh, he wouldn't have a way back, I would be able to trap it somehow, it doesn't have a lot of squares. So he correctly uh, retreats and I just went on with it, g4. He played knight f6 and this was black's 11th move and here on the 12th move, I blew it. I absolutely blew it. I played bishop d3. Now why did I blow it? Because I could have kept on breaking all the principles, only pawns. I could have played g5. And he has to retreat the knight and I have a lot of space. Okay, we, we've invested the pawn, but a very, very interesting position. So even still, I, I, I did realize, you know, I played a lot of pawns and that's pretty cool, but I could have played at least one more with g5. Maybe G5 and then C4 since I started already. But okay. Uh, the rest of the game, I got a lot of space advantages because of these pawn pushes. I blundered here because he can actually take on G6 twice because the H pawn is pinned. Fortunately, he did not see it and played H6. Even still, uh, I would get compensation, but now I'm much, much better because of the huge space that uh, the pawns are creating here. So this is good for white. C4, another pawn move. So basically what, move 16? Well, I made 15 out of 16 pawn moves, which I just realized, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. So okay, let's see what happened. Now, finally, I started to get my pieces out using all the space. And the B file seems just ripe for uh, for white to take over here. And that's what I did, queen e2, queen f2, putting pressure on b6, he's defending. Could play c5 probably. I play rook b4. Knight a8. I mean, he has no space. And the rest of the game was basically me trying to be clever playing around. But anything went c5 hits the rook. And I won the rook. And this is just panic. Now I'm up a rook. I break through. And here I thought, okay, the simplest way is just to trade down. So queen h7. And my opponent resigned. So <laughs> I posted this on, on, on Twitter. And my good friend uh, Ginger GM Simon Williams, he uh, 
he posted one of his games which of course was absolutely mental and he managed 13 moves with only pawns so with white is Lasha Zabashvili and the ginger GM himself Simon Williams with black let's flip it around so we see it from Simon's side let's witness the insanity from uh, from the source so d4 and Simon with h6 of course why play something sane when you can play something mental g5 don't know what they call this though. the creepy crawly or something I know Mike Bassman has played something like this anywho uh, e4 a6 h4 we move pawns only pawn is attacked protect it bishop c4 okay we have to protect here so block it with e6 knight c3 b5 hitting the bishop d6 hitting the knight c5 threatening the fork and actually why can't do anything about the fork and this bishop is not uh very well placed so black actually wins a piece here takes on b3 and now finally move 13 yeah so he managed uh 12 moves actually so here on move 13 knight b7 and black is basically winning let's see the game let's see five we trade it down here remember black is up a piece we get the pieces out knight f6 castles and yeah black should win easily we have more trades and this is fine because we have bishop f3 here at the end and then we pick up some material and white resigned um when researching this i found uh, another i haven't really looked at this game uh the gentleman's name is frederick ryan and this was played on the internet chess club i'm not sure about the the strength of uh, of the players here but let's see what happened d4 knight c6 d5 knight b4 chasing the knight very often when we see this these pure pawn uh, pushes. It, it's to trade, uh, not, not, not to trade, but to chase a knight. So e4, knight f6, chase this knight to the to the side of the board. e5, where does he, the knight go here? More pushes, and well, the knights don't look very good here. And after c4, we are hitting this knight. <laughs> it has to move again, and c5, and finally, uh, black has run out of moves for his knights. So it was pawn versus knights as you can see the side moving only the knights uh is not doing well here uh move 10 move 11 b5 another piece so well not not the best of play for black but interesting nonetheless f4 and we have 13 moves uh with the pawns and now finally white goes knight f3 if he was aware of you know his chase for for immortality maybe he would have moved the pawn maybe h4 maybe e6 14 he would have been close but we played knight f3 so 13 moves and well why the sub two pawn uh actually two pieces and looks like one-way street i would have i would have i would have cramped black completely here with e6 but that's just me that's just me basically anything wins up two pieces and breaking through here some desperation by black uh, and a nice finish ending in checkmate okay but the big daddy the big kahuna oh the mount everest of pawn move games is this one emil joseph deemer against thomas Heiling. i should have got a picture of, of emil deemer because he's like a legendary figure like he's got this huge beard and he was you know, involved with the Nazis, very mysterious, perhaps very crazy, but you know, his games were absolutely crazy. And Emil Joseph Diemer of Black Diemer Gambit fame. So, you know, that's where the name comes from. Well, let's see what happened in this game. He had the white pieces. F3. Of course, he wants to play after D5. He wants to play E4. The Black Diemer after takes Knight C3. But black does not want to do that he plays d6 and now we get a perch defense except white wants to play for all the marbles g4 trying to gain space with the pawns what the hell was that trying to gain space with the pawns i can say that g5 more space knight after d7 more space with the pawns of course black should be trying to 
you know, make inroads into, you know, what White's doing. Maybe at some stage D5, you know, try to get some, some light square control. C5 is probably fine as well, although, you know, the space advantage seems to make more uh, sense here at the D5. B5, C3 more pawns, A6, H4, Knight B6, H5 more space on the king side, E6 and H6. So now black has to move back. She's getting pushed around a bit here. We're going to move 12. A4. Wow. What is he doing? He's trying to grab all the space. I mean, can black take this? Probably. Maybe he's going to go B3, knight back. I'm not sure. Bishop B2 or something. But black takes D5. A5. Posting the knight. And that goes back and E takes D5. We are on move 14. C4. Move 15 f6 now teamer took on b5 and after fg5 move 17 f5 I'm trying to open things up he hasn't moved a single piece from the back rank on move 17 and he's still in the game according to the computer black is better he took on f5 and now finally move 18 finally white plays a, p uh, a piece queen h5 check now, uh, black would be doing quite well here after a move like knight f6. If queen takes, I guess rook here, and then we take on d5. Instead, he played rook g8 immediately, and b6 now. And again, you think, I think you can play knight f6, but black played bishop b7, and now he's too late. He plays the move, he wants to take on d5, but the problem is, now we can take on g5 with knight. And land this check on e6. And all of a sudden, white is coming up uh, out on top. So black tries to take in this knight g3 move, but Emir Yusuf uh, took on b7. Down the exchange at the moment, but this knight doesn't look very good. And remember, we have this protected pass pawn somehow. Rook g6, castles, rook e1, and knight b5. A lot of fun moves here. Now he takes, bishop takes, looks, yeah, it looks dodgy. We're going to take on, on, on e7. So 94 trying to block the uh, file, but rook takes e4. What's going on here? Good question. Now if we take it, I guess bishop h3 and knight c7 is going to pick up a rook. So black plate rook g1. Took an f1 and took on b5. Somehow the material is equal. But white's quality of pawns is much better. Rook g1, king tries to run, but knight takes d6. And now the pawn on b6 is just too strong. Black doesn't have any uh, any coordination of his pieces. And white is just yeah mopping up the floor here. And in the end, he, he made a queen here and won the game. So yeah, this is the big daddy of uh, pawn moves. Kind of the immortal... Pawn move game. Um, yeah, I messed up uh, the overlay a little bit. Hope you, hope you forgive me for that. But anyway, that was uh, my entry for uh, the immortal pawn moves. I didn't get too far. Uh, it was move twelve, which is pretty good. I could have gone thirteen, but twelve was pretty good. No, I went 11 with g4. Could have gone 12. Simon went 12. And uh, Frederick Ryan went 13. So how many moves uh, have you managed? Interesting. Let me know if you have you know, such a game. Always interesting to see what other people have done. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And hope to see you soon again. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.